It is the end of Taylor Swift Tortured Poets Department release week. We have made it. We have a new album that is really like two albums worth. Gotten through, you know, most of the storm as far as we are aware. The Eras Tour is coming back in a couple weeks and before I go through and analyze all of the lyrics to all of the songs and stuff, I felt like it was necessary to talk about how we talk about this album, um, which sounds very weird, but the way we talk about Taylor and this album and the announcement at the Grammys to like the kind of like lack of marketing and merch to like the variant releases and the double drop and the songs themselves and their lyrics and finally like the critical and fan reception. How we talk about that is interesting because this is now an album on which she has said y'all's talking has become a major, major problem and is upsetting me, causing problems in my life and putting me the Florida off. And so after you've heard that, it makes you kind of take a second <laughs> um, when you go to do your regular, I heard people calling it a paternity test on all of the songs, you know. We all thought that Maddie was just kind of like a fling. Mature Swifties, anyway, were like, he's not my favorite, um, but it'll it'll pass. We're here for the girl. Um, we're here for her choices, and we are going to sit and watch and clap for her successes and cry for her failures because we are here for her and we just need to wait for the next chapter and our fair favorite character will have made it out you know of this plot line that we don't like that was me and i feel like kind of the millennial bunch who don't have the same these weird delusions of the right and ability to control someone else's dating life especially someone else we literally do not know and there are plenty of parties um of all ages who did labor very loudly under that delusion um, that you have a right to say anything about who someone else dates or hooks up with regardless of if you know them or not but especially if um, you have no real relationship with them other than parasocial. And when you're finally you know with the person that you've been dreaming of being with for at this point years um, and your heart is aching but you are moving into the joy of getting the thing that you've been hoping for and wanting and this is the reaction um that you get and suddenly people are acting like they can tell you what to do and tell you what's right and wrong and become moral arbiters of your decisions um yeah i think the lyrics on this album are how most people would feel and then you have the social media post that is like everything on this is said and done um there is nothing more to avenge this is me processing it and i have released that and now like we're good she literally had to get up on stage and tell people to stop attacking someone who she had a toxic relationship with like 10 years ago and so she's learned now that she has to say things like that because we are children who can't understand that art can be made about a feeling you have and a need to process a feeling but that feeling is not necessarily one you need people to wage war on your behalf over I don't know, I feel like we've all been in the midst of a fight or a breakup. You know, I was just talking to my mom about something that was going on in my life like a few days ago and I was so, so mad. But I wouldn't want anything that I said in that conversation, like that I was like working through my feelings of anger to be acted upon by someone else. I wouldn't want my mom to hear those things and be like, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna make some phone calls. I'm gonna send some emails. I'm gonna fuck someone up. No, because like I was processing my feelings. I was very upset and like I meant what I was saying, but like 
I didn't want my mom to go do anything about it. And so now having to like deal with like taking responsibility for the actions and psychosis and fielding the fan base and that becomes upsetting and exhausting to the point where it's the people who love her most who are just the absolute worst. And part of it I think is an age thing, but part of it I think is the way Taylor Swift is and the culture of Taylor Swift and people joining in on that in the era of parasocial relationships being so common and the barrier of that being so blurred and her being so big and having such a big fan base because we talk about these songs the way we do because it's fun. And at the end of the day, it is a tradition of Swiftydom. You know, it's morphed from what it was into what it is now. And it started with this small artist and this small fan base, and she would capitalize letters and liner notes and lyrics and side eye little references and put little tidbits into what she sings because she's talking about real people and moments that are real. And so if you look for proof of them with those tidbits, you know, you'll you'll find it. And it was a fun way for her to connect with her fan base and open up her art to them in a way that was a little bit more personal and that was fun and amazing and innocent you know it was just some girlies on tumblr.com and it doesn't seem like a big shift from that to what we're doing now because it feels like we're still talking about things in the same way because we were talking about forever and always and about, you know, the 30 second phone call when it came out like no one's business and Dear John and Back to December and, and Taylor Lautner giving her flowers and maybe I was just a literal child, but it all seemed mostly in good fun. And if there were big swings taken, they were by Taylor. Like when she was like, oh, and the doll even comes with a cell phone so you can break up with other dolls. Um, or like in her songs, like Dear John, they weren't from fans at her or at the people she was dating. We didn't cross the line as fans into personal criticism of Taylor and her choices. We might talk about her boyfriends after they weren't together anymore, but it was always in service of our queen, who we ultimately wanted to be happy and whose choices on autonomy we supported and respected. Gossiping about her and who she'd date next and how many boyfriends she had and who she was interested in and all of that was literally up to everyone else and we hated them for it. We wanted them to leave our girly alone and like let her rock, let her do her thing and we were cheering for whatever it was that she felt like doing at the moment. And I feel like it's different from then to now partially because we didn't see her as so much of a like celebrity millionaire and I think that really like kind of took a shift um, with 1989, you know, we, back in the like fearless speak now era. And again, like I was like in like, you know, like middle school um, during this time. So maybe I was just a literal child, but I feel like you didn't talk about Taylor Swift in a way that you wouldn't talk about a good friend. She was writing these songs that like you really connected to and just felt like they didn't feel like they were a celebrity talking about their life. They felt like they were someone else who was going to school with their backpack every day talking about their life that didn't look that different than yours and so you know the word parasocial relationship wasn't really a thing yet but like I said it was just a bunch of girlies on tumblr.com with another girly who was writing songs that seemed to kind of connect us all and put us all on the same level and give us something in common and so you wouldn't speak about that person in a way you wouldn't speak about a friend because you kind of saw her as your friend in that way. You know, I knew she was older than me, but like she seemed like a big sister. She wasn't that terribly far off because the things she was talking about and like the being crushed by crushes and like things were absolutely relatable. And I think as she got bigger and her fan base grew to people who had not been necessarily a part of that, 
we became more comfortable, even as people who had been there for that time period, treating her as more of a celebrity figure that we kind of, whose life and times we kind of watched like reality TV and that we felt comfortable commenting on as such. Like I said, I feel like it was around 1989, the fandom really ballooned and there were a lot of people who didn't have the same tenderness for her and the same relationship with her that had been built from debut through Speak Now and to a certain point read um, with like vulnerable songs like All Too Well that again just made you feel like you and her were hurting the very same. 1989 was also not quite as vulnerable in that way. There are some heartbreakers, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't give you that heart to heart connection that that songs that some songs on the previous albums would and so I feel like there was a putting her over here up on a pedestalness and I think the and I think that she was very much leaning into that you know she talks about how like no amount of popularity will fill the lunch tables of your past and so during the 1989 era she was very much trying to fill those lunch tables and be like look at me I'm the girly who all the girls love and who hangs out with all of her friends and is a model among models having fourth of July parties every single year and so we felt comfortable criticizing her because she was a perfect Barbie doll and so that's what we were allowed to do because she was a celebrity but then also there was the tradition of Taylor Swift and talking about her songs and the diaristic songwriting which was still present very much on 1989 I mean like out of the woods in style hello wildest dreams I mean even 1989 is more personal than a lot of artists tend to get and so I feel like that really compounded on itself with the new fans who were like oh so yeah no this is someone we can really 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 talk about let's do it and she seems okay with it because she wrote blank space and a lot of people didn't realize that that was a joke um a lot of people kind of like took it too seriously um and it was again I feel like that added fuel to the like oh no so like we can talk about this bitch and we should. In fact, she is sort of begging us to. That's not necessarily what that song was, but I do think that there were a lot of people who joined the fandom during 1989 or had just seen Taylor Swift, you know, peripherally being talked about as the boyfriend girl for years and years who hopped on in 1989 because they liked some of the more banger hits um, and they heard things like Blank Space and were like, oh, so like she is everything that we say she is and she's thriving off of it. Like yes and no, like it's kind of a joke boo, but I'm not, I'm not here to explain blank space to people who don't understand it. But I do think that that is kind of where things changed into those lines being blurred and the fans also starting to be the ones who were mean and critical. Kind of felt like, oh, well, why don't we have the right to talk shit when like she brought it up in the first place? And okay, but there's a difference between talking about the lyrics to a song and where they may have hailed from in someone's life in the way we did during Speak Now and Fearless and continually bashing someone that you don't know personally with personal insults for dating someone else that you don't know, whether or not it's because you also want to date them in the case of Harry or you hate them for whatever reason in the case of Maddie or trying to break into her Rhode Island house or her New York City apartment repeatedly. Like these are not actions that are okay to take simply because someone hinted that a song might be about their last public relationship in the lyrics of a song. That one does not justify the other. You know, being a fan is one thing. Harassing, stalking, and being hypercritical and verbally abusive are another. And it's interesting, I've seen a few creators talk about this in the past few days, but people do treat Taylor Swift differently. They feel like they have this right for some reason to say whatever they want because, oh, well, it's Taylor Swift. There are plenty of popular artists who people don't like or that I'm like not super into but they don't and I don't constantly make posts about how stupid they are and how stupid their music is and how stupid the people who like it is and how they just wish it would all go away because it is just all so fucking stupid because that's aggressive like weirdly weirdly aggressive and out of nowhere and like 
has like this weird like like there's something else going on here vibe to it like when people are that angry about something like it makes you feel like there's something else and taylor swift is like one of the only artists that people are that aggressive about because if you did that for every single popular thing you'd have a twitter full of like crazy hate tweets but people don't act like that when someone else does something like enter a new relationship or release something that people don't like the people who attack her have always been incredibly loud needlessly and needlessly aggressive and i'm not saying ariana or whoever else doesn't have haters but with taylor specifically it's always been this pointed vicious flavor of being able to say the most horrible things because it's taylor swift and i i have to feel like i had this thought and i feel like it's for a bevy of reasons and i think those reasons kind of stack upon each other and alternate when it's convenient like i think there is part of being a woman who is you know a young woman um who is perceived i mean she's like in her 30s um she's like an adult um but a young woman who sings about her feelings and her relationships and that just not being taken seriously she's also popular with young girls and we know that the things that young women tend to like are just not taken seriously regardless of what they are and we're starting to call that out a little bit more now but when she was like you know coming up and popular and you know a young girl herself that was absolutely like the biggest thing to shit on i remember being in middle school and being a teenager and it was kind of like everything that young girls did like was cringy and you were kind of supposed to as a young girl participate in it but also know that it was cringy and not be like super loud but like you had to have the ugg boots to wear for the other girls but if someone else made fun of it you kind of had to go along and make fun of it too because if you didn't you were basic and that was cringy you couldn't defend your basicness but you had to be a little bit basic in order to fit in um but taylor swift was one of these things that like i know i quietly liked and all my close friends quietly liked and i know when i was making friends that was something that like was a really quick connection if you found out that they also liked Taylor Swift. It wasn't something you could be loud about. You had to kind of be quiet and then you found someone else that liked it and you'd be like, oh, so red. Like, um, and you could get into it with that person. Um, and that's also what made kind of the Swifty community such an intimate and close knit thing. Um, it was a very like communal subject and so I also feel like that fed into a culture of it being something that you talked about and something that had lore. And I think that lore took a really sinister, um, overexposed turn during the 1989 era. So I think, I think it's that. And I also think like, I hate to bring it back to this, but the Kanye thing really didn't help. That really, that's humiliating. Um, people don't give her, and I mean, I feel like she's given credit for it now, but people didn't give her enough credit for how fucked up that was and how humiliating that is and how you can never really get the respect that you lost from that back. Like you have to yank and pull and beg to get it back and you have to be strategic about it because if you do beg, then that's not going to work. Then they're going to laugh at you. And so you need to do exactly what Taylor did and like brick by brick kind of like get people back to loving you. And she, she did that by the 1989 era, but she got too high and that was too much for those people who hated her. And so they needed to tear her down and there were, there was an opportunity and they took it. And so I feel like that was also the beginning of people having permission to interrupt her, basically, for people having permission to take the mic away and say, I'm gonna let you finish. Um, because it had happened to her publicly. And so now people could just kind of make fun of her. She was Taylor Swift was the I'ma let you finish. And so it was a joke. Taylor Swift was something that was to be talked about as a joke and that was okay. And that was a precedent that was just kind of set. And it just kind of kept going from there to the point where we have this 34 year old woman who we are just 
laughing at and laughing at and laughing at. And then the second she says, you know, there's a special place in hell um, for women who decide to use their time on the mic to shit on another woman. And we're like, whoa, whoa, why are you, what? that was so much. Why are you being so defensive? Maybe because at some point you just get done and you're tame and gentle and you're not saying anything until you know something, it really fucking hurts that time. Um, because the same wound has been stabbed at enough and so eventually you flinch and people are wondering, oh, what happened? Why? You've been, it's been fine. Well, it hasn't been fine. Um, it's been shitty and it's hurt, but like you can't say anything about it because if you do, then you're crazy and you're overreacting and you're the one that's writing songs. You're the one that's famous. Okay, but like writing songs doesn't give people permission to, again, verbally abuse you on the internet constantly and turn you into like the eternal butt of the joke. And I think this album is her grappling with our behavior, all of what I just talked to, but also her grappling with the relationship that she has with songwriting and with creating and that it's something that she loves and really needs to do to process things. But when your muse is your connections and your relationships with others, it's hard to grapple with trying to find a forever love and a forever partner and a stability in that because so many relationships do have twists and turns and facets. And how does opening that up as art how does opening that relationship up as a part of something she loves as a part of her work and intertwining the two how, does it make it so that one cannot live while the other survives um the relationship can't survive within those conditions but she needs to do that in order to process her feelings in order to stay in this relationship and if that's taken away from her like joe did then it starts to feel like she can't be herself and that she's not being understood. Um, and I would briefly object to the idea that her broken heart specifically, that being broken is her muse, that heartache is her muse, because I do believe she has written songs that are not at all about heartbreak. And there are other colors that come out within her work. And I will admit that a gargantuan heartbreak can make those colors more vivid just because of what you have gone through. But I do think that she can create while in a good headspace based on the work that she has given us. Again, I do not, I do not know her. Um, this is just what I have gleaned and been thinking about in the past few days while I have been listening to this album and seeing reactions to it and reading responses to it, etc. And it doesn't seem to me like she's someone who needs heartbreak in order to create. She needs to create and that keeps causing heartbreak for her. And what's crazy is that it seems like what would work is to have someone who understands that need to create because they don't think that has to be a problem, but it feels like she is working through the question of if it is, but she's not willing to let go of the fact that this is what she needs to do and this is her life. So that being said, um, I will be doing a lyrical analysis of all the Tortured Poets Department songs in two different parts that will be coming out in the coming weeks, going through what Taylor seems to be referring to, really just analyzing these songs like poetry and how they fit in with the musical production. Um, but what we will be approaching that with is the knowledge that it is all delusion and art analysis as a fan who does not know this person and what we're not going to be doing is judging her for things that we think she's saying or things that we think she's done because we don't know. I meant to expand upon this earlier but I never really got into it. It is absolutely heartbreaking to me 
that even the mature Swifties, like I said, we just thought Maddie was a fling, but the people who were like part of the speak up now movement and were being really aggressive and vocal towards Taylor about their thoughts about this relationship and telling her exactly what they wanted her to do. We had no idea that this had been like a long burning emotional connection and relationship between the two of them and that this was something that Taylor really cared about and that she really wanted that it was the one thing she wanted you know in her words and so it just really like I said goes to show we really just don't know we only have the glimpses that she shares with us and the things she shares with us are you know, her art, her poetry. Um, she said on stage at the Eras tour that she writes songs about feelings that she had for five seconds, five minutes, you know? And so that's, that's what we have access to. We don't have access to her life. You know, we don't know what she does day to day or who she spends her time with. We don't have access to her text logs. We have absolutely no idea about any of that and so for us to like make judgments based on the little tidbits we see in the media or her songs is absolutely insane not only that for them to like throw those judgments in her face and ask her to take action based on them is even more insane and so we are going to be analyzing the work of an artist we love in order to better understand and enjoy and interact with that work. We are doing that from a place of loving our queen, supporting her, her decisions, hearing her thoughts and taking them into consideration. And we are doing, and we are not doing it under the assumption that we are absolutely right and that we know everything or anything about her life definitively based on her work. This is a fan um, artist relationship. And so we are approaching it from that lens. Hopefully this made some sense. Um, I feel like pretty much everyone I know has just been like consumed in the tortured poets universe for the past few days, creating and consuming content on it and then listening to the songs. I've been like just going through my life and if I haven't had the songs in my head, if I've been somewhere where I like can't be listening to something, just out of nowhere like one of the songs will pop up I'll just be like washing the dishes and all of a sudden I look in people's windows like it's just like constant and so I've just had a lot of thoughts about all she had to say on this album and how we digest that and what we do with it and how we go from here as Taylor lovers um because it's so weird like lore is a part of the Taylor Swift universe and being a Swifty but I feel like that's kind of gone off the rails a little bit. We've kind of like crossed a line in terms of what Taylor is and what our relationship to her is as fans and like what's okay to do and say and what's like not okay um and we've kind of like lost sight of that in some ways and that was not cool and so I I don't know I just wanted to have this little chit chat um if this made sense to you fantastic let me know your thoughts below um I am I'm just a girl I am not judging anyone or trying to you know crucify anyone um by making this video I've just seen a lot of thoughts swirling and I wanted to collect and condense mine thus far here the album has only been out for five days at this point so please like if something else comes out that I haven't said anything about please know that and also know that like I don't know like I said on my first reaction video I really feel like you need to sit with Taylor Swift songs for a long time for them to really come into focus I mean I feel like there are songs on midnights that are just really now hitting and coming into focus like in the last month or even in the last week with these tortured poets songs and so please do not take anything I've said and be like that's absolutely what she thinks and that is wrong and I'm gonna tell her why because that's despicable um these are just the thoughts that I've had really think about it like a Taylor Swift song these are thoughts that have been had and we're processing them through this 
I hope you enjoy. Let me know what you think. Thank you so, so very much for being here. I love spending this time with you guys and like going through thoughts. If you are not a Swifty fear, not now that Tortured Poets release week is over, we will be going back to our regularly scheduled fashion thrifty Swifty creative content. And so for every Taylor Swift video there is in the next couple weeks, just because there's still going to be quite a few of them getting through all of the Tortured Poets content that I would like to make and that I like need to make in order to process this album. Um, there will also be a fashion thrifty creative video to accompany it. So along with this one, we will also be doing a fashion video. So be on the lookout for that. I'm not sure which one I'm going to get up first, but there will be two videos per week, a Taylor Swift one and a non Taylor Swift one. If you are not part of the Swifty universe, that is not a problem at all. You are still absolutely welcome here. And I'm so, so happy to have you. I'm not sure how you made it all the way through this video if you're not a Swifty, to be honest. Maybe I should have said that at the beginning. Oh well, thank you so, so very much for being here if you've made it to the end. I cannot tell you how much it means to me from the bottom of my heart. If you like or subscribe or comment or even just like watch this video, it really does make an impact on me and bring me joy. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I sincerely mean it. You, I'm speaking to you. Okay, I'm going to go. I will see you in the next one. I cannot wait. Mwah.